bear market? Market crash? No, 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 no. Never again. It's time to get bullish because with the magnificent Jerome Powell as our guiding light, nothing can stop us. Check out this fake comment I photoshopped on Reddit. Since Powell started printing, I feel like I can do anything. My hair started growing back, my sex drive is rejuvenated, and I've decided to leave my wife and children to run away with the babysitter. Thanks, Powell. Jerome Powell, the people's champ, our savior. The things that he's doing to this market are just legendary. And the best part is that it's causing retail traders to absolutely crush professionals, which I just love to see because it's so funny because professionals just get so mad about it. And then they complain on Twitter, of course. So we're going to talk about why that's happening in this video and where the market is headed from here. And we're also going to talk about what you should be thinking about and what you should be doing if you are indeed doing really well in the market right now. And just in case you'd like some more assistance crushing the market, we got our explosive stocks checklist. There's a link in this video and down below in the description and comments. It's all free. It shows you how our team finds stocks that do really well in this type of market. Check it out. Now let's check out what's going on with this market with the latest research from our research firm Macro Ops. You can find all this good stuff on the Macro Ops website. So the phase one lockdown caused quite the drop in GDP. Morgan Stanley says that there's only one type of recovery they were about to have. If history is a guide, a U recovery may actually stand for unicorn because U-shaped recoveries coming out of recession really never happen. As you can see right here in this chart, history suggests that it's always a V-shaped recovery from the trough, especially when it's an extreme trough. Every time GDP just rebounds like crazy. And once again here, we may see the same thing. No such thing as the U-shape that everyone likes to talk about. And we might get a real nice V this time just because of how much the Fed has gone into action. The size of the responses have been enormous, absolutely giant. Maybe enough to stop a bear market dead in its tracks. Not saying that's the case here, but it's a possibility. Check out this chart from Goldman Sachs that shows the US fiscal easing measures to date compared to those of the last crises. So the Corona crisis, look at this, huge. Such a bigger response compared to 2009, 2010, 11. Nothing compares to what we're doing right now. And I already told you why, it's because of this man right here, Jerome Powell, the hero that we all want and need. The P for Powell does not stand for play because he is not playing ever. The P is for print, which he is very good at doing. Look at him smashing that print button right now. And that's why we're getting this type of response and he's single-handedly saving the market. Now much of the spending has already taken place, but we can be rest assured that plenty more will be coming down the pipe. There's not a single hawk left within a thousand miles of DC. Everybody just wants to flood the economy with money. Latest I heard is that every family is going to get $6,000 a month. I mean, if that's the case, then why would you ever go back to work? You're making more with this coronavirus. It's a blessing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing sending money to people because they definitely need it, but it's just interesting. I've been hearing a lot of stories of people who lost their job but refuse to go get another one, even if it's there, because then they'll lose their unemployment and they're getting these checks. So it's the Republican nightmare. If you give people free money, then they don't want to work anymore. Is that happening? I don't know, maybe. Regardless, people need assistance though. I'm just glad I don't have to figure out that problem. And with all this stimulus, the US federal debt is set to take out World War II highs within the next couple of years. This chart is insane. Here's the debt in World War II, and here is where we're going, just a straight up line with COVID. That's why, you know, it makes me think that maybe this isn't the end of the long-term debt cycle. It's the end in the sense that, yeah, we are in the final stages, but what does that mean? We know in macro land, an event may take decades to play out. So even though we're at the end, it's the beginning of the end. And these countries and their central banks, they're coming up with so many creative ideas to kick the can even further down the road. This might not be it. This might not be the huge crash and reset that is eventually supposed to come. Maybe now it's going to be something else down the road because of the power of Powell. Now, of course, all this money flooding the market has a lot of people talking about inflation. And Bank of America published the most confusing sentence that I've ever seen on the subject. They said, just like stagflation in the 70s, we see clustered, volatile, and low real and nominal returns coming in the next decade, along with higher volatility and a weaker US dollar. We also think that the deflationary drivers of excess debt, aging demographics, tech disruption, all of those are going to fade. And all our current stuff, like the quantitative easing to the modern monetary theory, going from globalization to localization, because screw China, right? From Wall Street capitalism to Main Street populism, central bank subservience, trade capital wage controls, all those things means that people are going to have to find some inflation hedges soon. Going to need to look for real assets over financial assets. They're talking about long gold and small cap value. I get what they're saying, but whoever wrote that needs to be fired. It's like they threw up on a page. On that note, a good indicator of inflation is the commodity bond ratio, and it just recently hit three standard deviations oversold. And typically when it hits these levels, it marks an intermediate to long-term bottom, which is significant because a rising commodity bond ratio means rising inflationary pressures. So we might start seeing that soon. So moving on to markets, bears are just getting screwed left and right because every single dip is being bought and the market just 
continues to grind higher. And again, just like we said in previous videos, this 3000 level and where the 200 day moving average is, that's where the market is headed. And that's where we could possibly see it turn around. You can see it got close right here already and it's coming back. So this might be a big resistance area. And right now sentiment is so bearish, even as the market rips higher. The AAII bull bear spread rarely gets as low as it is right now. And this is a sentiment indicator. Markets don't typically make a top when the sentiment is so low. See right here, it's hitting this green line, which is 0.5. And as always, sentiment is a contraindicator. So if there's a bunch of bearish people, that's good. That means there's money on the sidelines to still come into the market. There's still a wall of worry for the market to climb so it can keep going higher. The opposite is when everyone is super bullish. Then all the money is in the market and then there's only one place to go, right? Lower. So the base case here is that we're still in the early stages of an extended sideways trading range slash bear market. I know I was talking about Powell preventing any bear market from happening, which in a way he did because the left tail bear case, meaning the really bad bear scenario has become a lot less probable because of guys like Powell and other policymakers, how they're flooding the market with money. So it looks like we dodged a bullet, but still we're looking at a possible sideways market. In a sideways market doesn't mean that the index has to trade just sideways the entire time. What it can also mean is the market just trading in a huge range. So imagine if, you know, we have this big bull rally, then we fall back down to almost lows, have a huge rally again, fall without actually going anywhere, you know, without breaking new highs. That's considered a sideways market. And fortunately in those types of markets, there are still rallies that you can play, but your risk management and trade management become even more important. That being said, you can't discount the fact that we may actually be in a renewed bull market, even though it's very unlikely. Anything is possible because there's still so much uncertainty. You can't really have strong conviction either way. And I'll tell you right now, I agree with Alex who wrote this. He's the lead researcher at Makarovs. I'm definitely bearish, but at the same time, you know, I'm fully long right now. I'm playing these rallies and I'm collecting the profits because you can still make good money in bear market rallies. And you can see while this rally has been so strong, the sell-off that preceded it was also extremely strong. So we're well within the norms of past bear market rallies. This current one has been going on about 46 days and then we increased 30%. So the average is a 70 day rally with a 22% gain and the median is 35 with a 19% gain. And yeah, I know 30% is higher than both of those numbers, but that total number at the end is going to include the rally up and the drop. So like here in 1947, 393 day rally, the total was only 23%. So we still got to wait and see. And one of the places you can look to tell us where the stock market is going is the credit market because credit leads stocks. And you can see right here that credit is going lower. So it's not confirming this big rally that we're having in stocks, but there can be a long lag in between where credit is going and for the market to follow. So this is something that we should keep an eye on, but it's not necessarily a sell signal right now. Market still looks really strong. It's also why you don't just base your analysis off one indicator. Another amazing thing is what's happening in the retail space right now. So here's a chart of darts for the largest retail brokerages and darts stands for daily average revenue trades. You can see that Charles Schwab, they've hit a record. It's spiking. TD Ameritrade record. E-Trade record. So it looks like retail investors have been jumping in to buy the market in mass at record breaking rates. Maybe that's where everyone's stimulus check is going, but typically you don't see this kind of behavior near long-term bottoms. Near long-term bottoms, no one wants to even touch the market. They're disgusted with it, but that's not what's happening. I saw this article on CNBC too, saying that young investors pile into stocks seeing a generational buying moment instead of risk. So the Citibank chief US equity strategist, he said he heard anecdotally about younger individuals with less market experience viewing the March plunge as a unique time to start portfolios. And they were often crowding into the tech arena, purchasing the stocks whose services or products they know and use. And that's been confirmed by the data from all the major online brokers, Schwab, Ameritrade, E-Trade, Robinhood. They saw new accounts grow as much as 170% in the first quarter, while at the same time stocks were plummeting. Fastest bear market ever. Schwab, for example, saw monumental volumes of trading from their 609,000 new broker accounts that they added in the first quarter. 280,000 in March alone. That quarter included 27 of the 30 highest volume days in Schwab's history. People are going nuts. Look at this right here, new accounts spiking like crazy year over year. Schwab 58%, TD Ameritrade 150, E-Trade almost 170% growth. Everyone's piling in. And it's much easier because there's no commissions anymore. And if you don't have enough money, you can just buy fractional shares. You can just buy a piece of a piece of Google instead of paying 1400 per share. You can check out Robinhood stock positions. Look how they spiked after the coronavirus lockdown happened. And this is the total number of stock positions at Robinhood. Some of the stocks that everyone is buying are like tech stocks like Apple. TD Ameritrade said that a lot of their millennial clients have been buying that. You got Microsoft, some banks, Disney. People are even buying beaten down oil stocks, which as you saw, YouTube was all over that. They're buying beaten down airlines and cruise lines. Forget what Buffett said. Delta, United, Carnival Cruises, 
is Norwegian. And of course, the professionals are saying that this is not going to last. Like Mike Krauss, the chief investment officer at Counterpoint Mutual Funds. He's saying Robinhood investors are making all the classical mistakes in the short term. They may work for today's market, but not in the long run if repeated. So it's really funny right now because all the professionals are just so bearish, as you saw in those sentiment surveys. They keep trying to short this market and then getting blown out because the market keeps going higher no matter what. And then they see retail guys jumping on Robinhood and just buying companies like Netflix and just scoring and making such good money. It's so funny because I know how mad these guys are. Nothing makes them more mad than the dumb money making the right moves. So honestly, this all goes back to my theory of what I think is going to happen in the market. Based on the fact that the market's goal is always to frustrate the most amount of people possible. So what I think would be the funniest outcome, because that's what's important, the funniest outcome in the market, that's what I like to track, is I want to see the market actually hit new highs. If it does that, then all the smart money will just be disgusted, so frustrated, so angry, they might even start buying in. And if that occurs, you might also see the type of bubble sentiment that you need for a top to form. And that bubble sentiment would come from retail traders because it's going to look like, oh my gosh, retail, all these people on Robinhood called the bottom and just made a killing in the stock market. And then all of a sudden you see stocks taking off. Everyone's talking about them. I mean, they already are. You saw how many new accounts are coming online and we get a huge blow off top. The thing just runs similar to what happened to Bitcoin in 2017. Remember, you couldn't have a conversation without Bitcoin coming up with everybody, every single person, people who have never looked at markets ever before. So we could see that euphoria. And again, going back to sentiment, that's what you need to see for a top. Retail leads it, the institutional money finally follows. And then, then after we hit new highs, that's when we actually have the big crash. After all the smart money decided, okay, let's get bullish. That's when things will turn bearish. And then all the retail people who got in, then they're going to get the real taste of the market. When you really get screwed, we're buying because stocks look cheap or, you know, having a once in a generation opportunity doesn't work. And then at the same time, the institutions will be positioned the wrong way. So they're going to get hurt too. So again, the point of the market is how much pain can it cause everybody smart and dumb money. Anyway, that's my theory based off how sadistic the market can be, but it is is interesting what's happening because even my financial advisor friend he was telling me that money is just coming out of the woodwork right now it looks like all that money that was held in cash from 2009 because this previous bull market was the most hated bull market all of a sudden this coronavirus thing has been the opportunity that everyone was waiting for so there's just loads of cash flowing in and they're like put it in the market i want to invest and he's like Hol hold up don't you want to save some cash you know the economy is in the doldrums right now people are losing jobs you might want to you know keep some savings because because putting it in the market, you know, there's still risk. There's still a chance that you can lose it. Yeah, everyone's making money right now, but the market is inherently risky. So maybe keep some cash on the sideline. But they're like, nope, put it in the market because the FOMO is strong. A lot of people have made a lot of good money on this rally. So if you are making money and you're newer to the market, first off, great work. That's awesome. And it's a lot of fun. And I'm glad all these people are getting introduced to the market. But I would also say it's OK to keep some cash, you know, to stay conservative. You don't need to invest your rent money into the stock market. It's not a good idea. Cash is a position, too. You don't have to be all in stocks. And also, if you're making money while the getting is good make sure you use that time to study what you're missing because the market may seem easy right now but it's not the market hasn't suddenly changed because of this coronavirus there's a reason why 99 percent of investors fail there's a reason people have lost their entire life fortunes and crashes and no matter how much powell stimulates the market isn't going to change that's still going to happen like i said we might be kicking the can down further for even a larger crash so if that's the case then the best thing to do is stay humble and keep learning regardless of how much money Money you're making and picking stocks is only 10% of successful investing the rest of the 90% that's how you manage your investments so as long as you stay humble and focus on learning don't get too cocky then you will beat the pros in the long term but the worst thing that could happen and this happens to so many investors when they start out happened to me and happened to a bunch of other professional investors too is when you start on the market you get lucky and things work in your favor but instead of attributing that success to luck you start attributing it to skill and then you think you're a genius and then you start doing more and more more risky stuff and then all of a sudden all those profits that you made disappear and you start losing and you're thinking what the heck is going on and then you get lucky again so then you start thinking you're genius again and go all out then you realize you're not start making mistakes start losing and then you repeat that cycle until your whole account goes to zero that's why even though this chief investment officer might sound like a hater his point is valid too so just because what you're doing right now may be working it might only be a short-term solution and it might not work going into the long term it might actually hurt you but you're not going to know that until until you focus on learning and actually get good at investing. And it takes a little while. It's not an immediate thing. And here's a little advice from Adam Robinson.
Robinson. In case you're looking at this market and thinking, nope, none of this makes sense at all. And Adam Robinson, he started the Princeton Review, and he's also a genius macro guy who consults all the biggest hedge funds. He's done a lot in his life, he's genius level himself. But he said when someone says it makes no sense that, really what they're saying is this, I have a dozen logical reasons why gold should be going higher, but it keeps going lower. Therefore, that makes no sense. But really what makes no sense is their model of the world, right? So I know when that happens that there's some other very powerful reason why gold keeps going lower that trumps all the logical reasons. Things that don't make sense are an algorithm for finding opportunities. Where do we find good ideas? Look where no one else looks. When things don't make sense, get into the trade. And as Alex said here, things that make sense are often already discounted in the price. The things that make you go, hmm, aren't, which is why the no sense algorithm is quite powerful. That's another way of saying stay fallible, which is exactly why this channel is named that. Because even right now, even though I'm bearish and I don't think this rally makes too much sense, I'm still playing it. I'm still going to benefit from the upside because I know I don't know everything and price is king. And of course, if you're interested on playing the upside and finding more stocks, check out our explosive stocks checklist. Link in this video and down below in the description and comments. All free shows you how we find our stocks. And if you like this video or even if you didn't like it, subscribe anyway. We got a lot more coming out. So subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Stay fallible out there. Bye.